Right. So uh, I'm in the customization instance, uh, you all have access to. And what I'm going to do is I will uh, uh, first uh, click on the apps icon and then we'll go all the way down and select uh, and click on this uh, app called users, right? So once I click on users, you will see that uh, we have uh, three options here to select users, user roles, or user groups. So uh, in this part of uh, today's session, I'm going to discuss about user roles. So I'm, I click on this tab called user role. So when I do that, I'm seeing that we already have uh, different user roles that have been configured, right? So, uh, I mean, like in a live system, because it's a kind of a demo system, we are only seeing, uh, I mean, three user roles. We are seeing private tracker academy, we are seeing super user and tracker data entry. But in a live system, it is quite likely that you are going to see many more user roles. And uh, probably like after doing today's session, you'll, you'll be able to figure out what are the different types of uh, user roles that you can create. Okay, so uh, let me kind of open this tracker data entry user role. So what I'm going to do is to click on this tracker data entry and it opens uh, this user role. So here you will see that uh, uh, we have a name here. So this is the name of the user role and we have a description. And below that we have all the authorities that I mentioned in the presentation. So here you can see we have a huge list of authorities, right? A comprehensive list of authorities. So uh, these authorities, we can actually um, divide into five main sections, right? So you can see these individual, I mean, the, the boxes here are the sections that uh, we can um, categorize them into. So the, uh, the sections are, we have metadata, we have apps related authorities, we have tracker related authorities, import export, and uh, authorities related to system, right? So let us, uh, I mean, briefly discuss like what, what, what each of these sections are doing. So when it comes to metadata, the metadata section allows you to assign different permissions to a user role that allows for adding or deleting either public or private metadata objects, right? So you can see, uh, we have different permissions, a list of permissions here. And when we, uh, I mean, tick on each of these boxes, we can provide uh, public or private uh, metadata permissions, right? For example, you could provide someone access to create and delete public data, uh, data elements. So if you provide them access here, just by ticking, right, like this, you can provide access to delete, right? And also, uh, uh, you, you also have, for example, uh, uh, something called external access, but this external access is only available to uh, objects uh, which, are, which are of report type. So you can see here the documents, event chart, event report, uh, and here maps. So these kind of event-related event objects, you, you also have another type of uh, permission called external access. So basically you can see here uh, under this metadata section, it's all about different types of metadata and providing them public and private uh, add, uh, permissions, delete as well as external access, right? And the next section we have is about apps. The app section allows you to give access to various DHS2 apps uh, that are within your instance. This includes all the core DHS2 apps as well as any custom apps you may have on your system. So for example, here you are seeing uh, most of the core DHS2 apps. So I'm seeing in this instance, of course, we only have the core DHS2 apps, but in case like sometimes you may um, install a few custom apps like uh, uh, contact tracing, relationship tracing application or scorecard, uh, WHO DQ app. So these are custom apps. So uh, when they are installed, they will also be listed in this app section. And next we have the tracker section, which is of course the, uh, I mean, the major uh, main focus of this academy. So here we have uh, uh, authorities that have their own specific, uh, so here the tracker has their own specific uh, section, uh, mainly because it is unique to the tracker data model. So you may be wondering like why some of them are not uh, probably like incorporated somewhere else under metadata or uh, later I will show like in the systems. 
but this has been done because they have their own uh, unique data modeling tracker. So uh, these concepts are much uh, suited to be, uh, uh, I mean, categorized under a separate section. So those are the, I mean, what you see here are the authorities which are categorized under the tracker section. And then we have uh, the next one, which is uh, import export. So here, uh, uh, these authorities are usually given to user roles uh, that will be dealing with the import and export of metadata or even data. So this is usually a kind of a specialized role and uh, probably you will only grant these permissions to uh, 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 I mean, very limited number of users who are actually dealing with import and export. And next we have the systems section. So here uh, you have authorities to allow a user to run various uh, system level tasks and operations. So these kind of uh, include operations like, uh, as you can see, data approval, uh, uh, data approval uh, workflow, generating min max value, right? Uh, moving organization units, replicating users, I mean, tasks like that. So these are again, some specialized tasks you are mainly assigning. Um, uh, to users who kind of have a very higher level permission, probably system, uh, uh, I mean, system admins or uh, uh, high level implementers at uh, national level, right? So as you can see here, we have uh, a, a huge uh, list of uh, authorities. So we don't have time to go through all of them. Uh, the thing is like most of these authorities are kind of uh, self-explanatory, but uh, I, I, I understand that some of them uh, may not really be that clear. So what you can do is, uh, I will, let me share the section of uh, the documentation dealing with uh, user roles. So you can refer that, but I understand it again is uh, not that comprehensive. If that is the case, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pasting the link to the documentation here. So that's one option uh, or else like if you're unclear about anything, uh, I mean, because these permissions, uh, the authorities, I mean, they can also get uh, changed in time to come. So then if you are unclear at any, any time, even after uh, going through the documentation, the best would be to uh, ask this issue in the community of practice. Okay. So, uh, let us try to, now that we have opened this uh, tracker data entry user role, let's try to uh, see, uh, I mean, what are the particular roles, uh, the authorities that have been uh, assigned to this particular uh, user role. So to do that, I mean, as you can see here, most of these uh, authorities, uh, especially in like, for example, the metadata and systems, they have not been checked. So we have option here, uh, selected authorities only. So if we just uh, select this one, it will only filter the permission, the, the authorities which have been assigned to this particular user role. So you can see here, uh, for example, uh, this particular user role has been assigned two main sections of uh, authorities. So we have one section of authorities related to apps and the other one related to tracker. So why have we done that? Why is this uh, particular user role has not been uh, provided with any authorities related to metadata? So the reason would be, I mean, probably you can understand like this is a kind of a data entry specific uh, user role. So we don't really expect this person to create or add or delete any metadata in the system. So metadata is kind of like uh, tracker attribute, data elements, uh, option sets. So we don't want uh, this, uh, uh, the users with this role to do any of that, any of those activities, right? And then we have this app section. So what uh, this means, as I mentioned in the presentation is that here, this user will need to have access to some apps, right? For him to kind of uh, carry out day-to-day -day activities, right? So the first thing is he needs to have access to the dashboard because the thing is like the dashboard is the first app um, that any person will land when you log into the system. So that's why we need the dashboard app. And you also need the browser cache clean app because mainly because, um, you know, like we, we tend to do some modifications to metadata and then this can kind of interfere with uh, updating uh, whatever the, I mean, the, the present view of the tracker capture application. So to do that, 
uh, you always, I mean, when we do kind of, when we do training programs for uh, uh, tracker or I mean any DHS two training program for end users, we always, uh, um, I mean, tell them about this uh, browser cache clean app and how to clear the browser cache. So for that purpose, we need to have uh, uh, access to the browser cache clean app and tracker capture. Of course, is required because that's the main app. Uh, he's going to perform all, I mean, almost all his tasks, right? And then we have some tracker related permissions, right? Which we have assigned. So we will discuss about them uh, in, in a bit more detail in a while. And of course, we are not going to assign any import export related uh, authorities because he's, he's just a data entry uh, role. So he's not going to do anything uh, related to import export. And also uh, same applies to the system level authorities, right? Okay. And one uh, important thing to note is that, so, when you are when we are defining um, creating user roles, we should always remember to create user roles to cover a specific function. So, for example, here we are trying to cover the function of a tracker data entry. So, one mistake that we see uh, in most of the DHS two customizations is that, like, um, I mean, like we tend to create uh, user roles based on the specific job type. So, for example, we tend to create user roles for data entry clerks reproductive health staff, or else like we, we, we tend to create user roles based on a geographical, like for national staff, provincial staff, but like that's not a kind of a scalable uh, or recommended practice because like what we recommend is you should try to create a user role for a specific function. And when you do that, you can always combine user roles. So for a, like, if you have a kind of, a, 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 I mean, a user, who is at a national level and kind of attend to multiple uh, uh, functions, then what we can do is for that user, we can assign multiple user roles, right? And together with the user groups, we'll be able to achieve what we want. So this is the kind of recommendation of creating user roles in a DHIS2 uh, uh, setup. Okay, right. Uh, so let's now see what are the different uh, uh, permissions. Like we have already discussed about the apps uh, that have been assigned to this user. And then let's see like, what are the different uh, tracker related permissions that are there? Okay, so let me briefly uh, uncheck this so that I can see all the tracker related permissions. So the first one we have is administer program uh, dashboard configuration. So here this defines like, uh, if you can remember, like when you kind of, um, uh, when you open the tracker capture application, for example, you have different types of uh, widgets, right? So sometimes like, uh, let me select, uh, okay, I'm just going to select uh, one track in this instance just to show uh, what, what I want to highlight. So here you can see like we have uh, widgets related to indicators, right? And then uh, we also have relationships, nodes, so sometimes these widgets, uh, like we don't really want in our implementation, right? So if that's the case, we can hide them and we can kind of like, we want to kind of configure the uh, the particular dashboard in a way that we should, I mean, uh, we, we expect the program people to see, right? So these kind of activities you can determine and we can kind of uh, like configure uh, through a particular authority. So that's the kind of authority that you have here, administer program dashboard configuration. But then even though this is related to tracker, we have to understand like who are the users uh, to which we are going to uh, assign this authority. So we are not going to give this authority uh, to each and every, I mean, every tracker data entry user because then they might keep on changing it. So, uh, I mean, like your program, I mean, the visualization of tracker capture is going to get disorganized, right? So here, uh, that's what this particular author uh, authority does. And then we have uh, one, for delete enrollment and associated events. So, okay, uh, another thing that you have to keep in mind is that in DHIS2, whenever uh, uh, any, any user who has permissions to create an event has the permission by default to delete the event, right? So if that is the case, like uh, then what does this particular uh, permission or the authority defines? So it allows cascade deleting of an enrollment in a program as well as all of its related events, right? So if we give this permission, you can delete enrollments along with events. So you don't have to actually, uh, I mean, 
if you, if you don't have this permission, what you have to do is you have to delete events one by one and then finally delete the enrollment, right? So, but if we give this authority, he can delete the enrollment along with all the events, right? Then we have the, the next one, which is somewhat similar, delete track entity instance uh, and associated enrollments and events. So if they have this permission, it kind of allows cascade delete of a track entity instance, all of its enrollments uh, in, the, in the programs as well as related uh, events, right? So it's again, kind of like a higher level uh, function. Then we have this manage program rule uh, authority. So this is kind of uh, something to do with the, the, uh, the metadata program, program rule metadata. So uh, it, pro it gives that particular user the authority to manage the program rules, right? And then we have search track entity instances across all org units. So this allows the user to search for uh, track entity instances across all organization units, regardless of the search organization units that they are assigned. Okay, right. And then we have uncomplete events, which allows the user to incomplete a previously completed event. And uh, we have tracked uh, update tracked entities. Uh, which allows the user to update an existing track entity. And finally, uh, Weave in Event Analytics, uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a functionality uh, which allows user to weave analytics, analytics data related to any events. So this uh, uh, particular, the, the final role, uh, final authority is kind of important. Uh, whenever you don't want uh, like uh, some user roles to see uh, tracker analytics data, because sometimes uh, you have requirements where like you want only aggregate data to be weaved by some users. Where the tracker analytics, you want to kind of, uh, uh, I mean, not let them uh, have any access, right? So uh, it is kind of useful to have this kind of authority uh, when you want to achieve that function. Right. Okay, so I guess that's a kind of a brief overview of uh, different authorities which are there, but um, um, I don't think I can um, go through each and every authority that is listed here. So I, I really suggest you to um, uh, refer the documentation, but again, like I understand like uh, some of these uh, concepts that, that are here may not be that uh, self-explanatory. So if that's the case, you can always ask in the Slack or later on probably in the community of practice. Okay. Right. Uh, so, Let's try to uh, log in with the user. Uh, so what we can actually do is we have this um, user role, which is uh, the user called tracker entry. Yeah. We have this tracker entry user, right? So uh, uh, when I open this tracker entry user and go all the way here, we will see that particular user has been assigned the tracker data entry user role, okay? So uh, uh, let me first uh, show you uh, how these user roles work and how these permissions are assigned, right? And then probably what we are going to do is to create a user and uh, you will again uh, uh, do, uh, I mean, go through the learner's guide and do the exercise of creating a user role as well as assigning it to a user, okay? Right, so here, this particular user the tracker data entry user uh, who is already configured in the system is having the user role tracker data entry, right? So if I go back and see the particular permissions in the tracker data entry user role, you will see uh, this particular user has access to delete enrollment and associated events, delete track entity instance and associated enrollments and events, and he can search all across the organization unit, uncomplete events, and update tracked entities, right? So let's see uh, how these permissions are working when we log in using that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I will share my screen again. Right, so I'm, I'm in the same customization instance and I'm going to uh, 
login using this uh, user tracker entry, right? So we'll sign in. And then let me see, like, um, uh, I mean, like, what are the different permissions this uh, tracker you, uh, tracker entry user has uh, as defined by his uh, user role. So when I click on this apps icon, you will see that this particular user is only having access to these uh, four apps. So by default, this menu management application will be available to all user uh, user roles. So here you can see the tracker capture app, dashboard and the browser cache clean app are the, are the only apps uh, which are visible to this particular user. He is not having access to uh, the common apps like the data entry or even any analytics apps like uh, data visualize, right? So this is how this happens is because like these are the only apps we have configured when we were uh, configuring the user role, okay, right? So let's try to open tracker capture application by clicking on it. Right, and you can see that uh, this user is having access to the bird district, right? And in this bird district, let me see. Uh, okay, now we have different, uh, uh, or, I mean, uh, the organization units under the bird district. So uh, I can see like uh, there are data to, uh, I mean, under each of I mean, different different uh, organization units. So let me select. Um, Say for example, um, Cardinal Hospital Gateway, right? Okay, or else probably we can actually take the TB program so that we all are clear. Okay, yeah, this is better. So I have clicked on the Parrot District Hospital and the TB treatment card program, right? Okay. So what I will do is I will, uh, just click and open one of these uh, track entity instances which have been registered. Okay, I've done that. And you can see that we have different, uh, I mean, three different events, right? We have one on diagnosis, one on continuation phase one, and then we again have uh, one on continuation uh, two, right? So let me click on this continuation one event. And when I scroll all the way down, you can see that this event is already completed. That's why we are seeing this as incomplete, right? This, this button has changed, the label of the button has changed to incomplete because the event is already complete. So let me click on this incomplete button. If you can remember, uh, when we were configuring this uh, uh, tracker data entry user role, we gave this use, user the permission to uncomplete event, right? So let me click on this incomplete button. Right, and it'll ask, are you sure you want to edit, uh, edit the selected event? And then when I click OK, right, yeah, it worked. That's why the label changed to complete. Uh, but like in case if this permission was, this authority was not assigned, it wouldn't allow this user to perform this activity, right? So he can do it mainly because uh, this permission has been granted. Similarly, you, you may be able to remember that uh, we, we uh, gave that person access to update a track entity instance. So what we mean by update is that, uh, so we, we allow them to kind of click on this edit button and uh, change the attributes. So what we can actually do is like, say for example, um, we can change the age. So we, it was a mistake, we can make it 31, right? And we make it 31 and click on save, right? So it's getting saved, right? As you can see here, it has been updated as 31. That is because we have, uh, um, enable uh, the authority to perform this updating of track entity instance, right? Then uh, we can also see uh, something else that, uh, that has been assigned. So for example, uh, let's try to see whether we can delete. So we have different, I mean like, so one thing is uh, here, here we have option to delete the person, right? And we have option here to uh, kind of delete the enrollment, right? I think this uh, particular user role had both the permissions. So let us uh, try one of them. So one uh, option is to like try to delete this uh, enrollment. So uh, when I try to do that, it'll, it'll prompt us saying, are you sure you want to delete the selected enrollment? This will delete all events associated with this enrollment. So as you can see here, for this enrollment, 
So this person has get enrolled to PB treatment card. And in that one, we have three events, right? So ideally we can delete each of these events one by one and finally delete the uh, particular enrollment, right? That's the usual uh, way of kind of deleting if this person is not having the authority to delete the enrollment along with the events. But if he's having this authority, he will be allowed to delete, right? So the delete button is visible. So let me try to click here and click yes, right? So you can see like the enrollment has now got deleted. Okay, that was possible <clears throat> because we have assigned this uh, uh, authority to that particular user. Right, so it was a kind of a uh, lengthy session. I did a, I mean, I did the presentation overview and then uh, the initial part of the demonstration of uh, user roles. So let me briefly stop here and let us try to do the exercise one in the learner's guide. So you can use the same customization instance. So all the instructions are there. So I will give you about 10 minutes to do this task and we'll, we'll, we'll meet again in 10 minutes. Okay. Right, so uh, what we are going to do next uh, is to create a user and assign uh, the existing user role, okay? So uh, let me click on the apps icon and then select users, right? And then I proceed to users here and I click on the list and you will see the existing list of users. And I'm actually going to create a new user. So to do that, I have to click on this plus button, right? And when I do that, I get two options. The first one is to create account with user details. And the second is to e email invitation to create account. So uh, you can select whichever the options, but like, um, like you have advantages and disadvantages of each of these options. So the first thing is like, if you use the create account with user details, what you have to do is you have to fill out all the uh, required or mandatory fields here, like username, password, you will have to generate and type a password, and then you will have to retype the password and put surname, first name, I mean, all the mandatory fields, and then assign a user role to that user and assign the tracker, uh, assign the data capture and maintenance org unit, as well as data output and analytic org unit, and you can save, right? So that's the first approach. But the disadvantage, I mean, there are a few of them. The first thing is like, you will have to manually generate the passwords. And um, so it's a kind of a cumbersome procedure. And then you will also have to share these passwords with the, uh, with the, with the selected user. And it's quite likely due to uh, security concerns, once this password uh, is shared with the user, when in the first uh, login attempt, he will change the password. So that way, like, I mean, all this effort to create passwords and securely sharing, and I mean, anyway, that person is going to change the password is a, is a bit of a cumbersome procedure. And uh, it, I mean, like it might not really make that much of a sense. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, it is kind of a very simpler way of creating users. But a more sophisticated way of creating users would be to email invitation to create an account. So here what happens is we have to um, provide the mandatory details. And uh, we will also include the email address of the user. Uh, but then thereafter, the user can gen, I mean, uh, so basically once we create all, uh, once we input all these mandatory fields and click on uh, the final step of send invite, the user will receive an invitation by email and he will get a link uh, via email, which he can click and uh, which will redirect him to our DHS2 instance. And he can proceed with the remaining part of the re registration as well as uh, uh, inputting his own password of his preference, right? So it's a kind of a secure and a more, um, I mean, solid way of creating users. So let's try that uh, uh, method of creating users now. So I will um, give a username here. So um, let's put this, this tracker. 
and then I will have to um, give a use uh, user's email. So I will use this email address dhis2 dot test one at gmail dot com, right? And I will put um, I will uncheck this disable. Which I did by mistake. Test user, and I will keep. I uh, will not going to. I'm not going to input any of these fields, and I will keep the interface language as English. Um, and here, I will have to select a role. Okay, so I am going to select this role that we have. We have already been. Um, I mean, going through which is tracker data entry, right? So I double click that. So that is selected as a role. And you can always see like we can add more than one uh, user roles to a given user. But for this user, I'm not going to assign super, super user role. I will just assign tracker, tracker data entry role, right? So after doing that, we have to define the data capture and maintenance organization unit. So uh, as the name implies by assigning this org unit, uh, the user will be able to capture data at this given org unit or any org unit below that, as well as he will have access, if he's given the permission uh, by the authority, access to maintenance or uh, maintenance application uh, with that org unit access, right? So I'm going to give this user uh, the access at bird district, okay? And here also I'm going to give him access for data output at, and, and analysis at the bird district, right? Then if I click on show more options, you have a few more options like search organization unit. I'm going to give access for training rand and I'm not going to uh, do anything for the user groups as of now, because we will be discussing about it later, right? Okay, so after doing all, uh, after configuring all this, I'm going to click on send invite button. I have clicked on the send invite button and it says that uh, user test user saved successfully and the invitation should have been sent, right? So let me log into the email account and see whether I have received the email uh, invitation. Right, there you go. So I get this email, right? And I'm, I will click and open and it says, this is an invitation to create customized user. Uh, a user account and I have the link here, right? So what I have to do is I have to click on this link which I received through email. So I'm going to do that. And once I do that, right, I'm directed to this account, uh, this, this particular page where I have to give my first and last name. So I will just put this test user. And the username, of course, I can't change because it has been already configured in the system. And here I can actually give a password. So I'll give a password here. I have to type it again. Right. Mobile phone also I have to enter. So I will put something like this. And then I will put uh, the organization as Ministry of Health, right? I do that and I click on create. So yes, now I am actually, I have been able to create this uh, new user. And if you check here, you will see that I'm actually logged in with that uh, newly created user. Okay. So this user, let's see like what, uh, what applications he has access. So as you can, as, as you imagine, is only having access to the applications tracker capture dashboard and browser uh, cache cleaner because these are the apps which are available by, as defined uh, based on the authorities available to the uh, tracker data capture user. Okay, right. Fine. So what I'm going to do is like I will give you some time to uh, uh, do this ex do this part of the exercise. So please uh, do the exercise number two in the learner's guide. So what we will also do is like, uh, because we have had few lengthy sessions, uh, you can take 20 minutes break and we'll see you in 20 minutes. So uh, by that time, uh, you can also complete the exercise too. Okay. 
Let me share my screen. All right. So I'm going to click on the users app. And then I will try to list all the users uh, who are here. So I can see like uh, some of the new users um, now, probably uh, the user roles that uh, you have created already. So what I'm going to do is to click on this plus button and create a new user role. And this new user role is for the purpose of tracker data analysis, right? So, um, Let me create a new user role called Tracker Data Analysis, right? Right, so uh, this user role is Right, so next thing we have to figure out is like we have these five sections of uh, different types of authorities and what are the authorities that we need to add for each of these user, uh, for this user role, okay. So uh, what we need to understand is that when we create a, a, a user or a user role um, in order to analyze data, he needs to have access for event and tracker data outputs, uh, uh, possibly via data visualizer, maps, event reports, event visualizer, and dashboards. And also he should be allowed to create public items um, from within these applications, right? So uh, with all this in the background, if we just think again, um, what are the types of roles we should run? So number one, they should be able to access the various analysis applications, right? And secondly, they should be able to see the event data. Okay, and thirdly, they should be able to add public reports from the analysis application, right? So we have these three requirements and to achieve them, we have to de decide what are the authorities we are going to add, okay? So let's focus on the first one, which is like about the apps, the different apps that we have to assign to this user role. So we know like they need to have uh, access to the dashboard application. And then we need to give them access to the data visualizer, right? And then probably they need access again to the uh, event reports as well as event visualizer. And finally, the maps application, right? So these are the applications that we, uh, that, that is, that, uh, that we require to give them permissions. And then uh, let's look at the different metadata that they need permission. So for example, they need to have access to create dashboard. So for example, I, uh, okay. So for this purpose, I have added uh, add update public dashboard permission and they should be provided access to create event chart, event reports. Let me click here, event charts and event reports. And then they also need permission to create maps. And finally, possibly create visualizations, right? So these are the metadata access we need to provide to a user role for our tracker data analysis, right? And then let us move further down and we need to, again, um, one crucial thing is to provide them tracker analytics access. So here we have uh, a permission called Weave and Weave event analytics. We are going to also provide them that access. So these are the minimal uh, authorities that we uh, need to provide for this particular user role, the new user role. And once we are done, we don't, we don't actually need to provide any access related to import export or system related access. And we finally click on the save button, right? So now we have this uh, new user or a new uh, user role tracker data analysis, right? So what we are going to do next is to uh, add this new user role to an existing user. So the existing user we had, uh, we had one user for uh, the data entry, tracker entry, this one, right? Tracker entry user. So this was the user. Let me open that user and see what are the uh, 
user roles already assigned. So, okay, we have tracker data entry user role. I, I assume someone must have already renamed the permission I have, uh, the, the user role I have added previously. It's all right. So let me now find the new user role I have created, which is tracker data analysis, right? So now we see the user role that we initially created tracker entry. He already had access, uh, um, uh, the, the previous user role was to enter data. So we had uh, tracker data entry access. Now we have added uh, tracker data analysis user role. Okay, All right. So what we are going to do is we are not going to change anything else and we will save it, right? And let's try to log in. Um, Try to log out from this user and try to log in. Entry. Let me log in. Right. So now I'm logged in with the with the new user. I mean the same user we have tried before who previously had the only data entry access. So let me click on the apps icon to see any new changes. Yes, we are seeing some changes. Previously that uh, this user only had access to the dashboard, tracker capture, uh, browser cache screen and menu management. Now he has access to these new apps, uh, event, report, event reports, event visualizer, data visualizer and maps as we have configured in the new, new user role. Now he has uh, kind of uh, uh, access to applications which are coming from both the user roles. That's the most important thing to understand here. So let us try to open one of these ap uh, applications uh, to weave uh, the tracker analysis data. So let me click on this event reports app, right? Okay. And here, uh, let me try to create a visualization. So possibly I can get a tabular output using this event reports app. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to generate a line list of all events um, from, yeah, there are so many programs. Let me select the TB treatment card and let me just select this diagnosis and initial phase. Now I will just try to narrow down um, uh, the metadata items available only for the uh, program attributes. And let me create get the first name, last name, and age and gender and the registration number. Right. And let me also see the um, org unit. So let me try to select at bird district and try to list down all the uh, events which are available. I'm going to click on the update button here. Unfortunately, I don't have any data for this so unit. I hope analytics must have been run. I run the analytics. Let me select another program. Let me, yeah, let me try ANC possibly. You can see register whether there's any data. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, or maybe the period, I'm not sure the period I selected before. So let me try to see. Mm -hmm. Try to get both the years and the bird district. All right, there we go. All right, so um, what I have done here is I have selected uh, the program TB treatment card in the diagnosis uh, and the um, in initial phase. And then uh, I just listed out here the uh, first name and last name as the attributes and the periods I have selected uh, these two years and then the ownership uh, and the uh, organization unit as the bird district. So with all this, I'm able to create this visualization. So this is possible because uh, the particular user role gave this user access to the uh, event data, event analysis data, right? So that means uh, this new, the, the, the previous user who only uh, had tracker data entry access before is now having access to analyze data uh, uh, so we know this because he has uh, access to the new applications, the analysis applications, as well as he can create a visualization, in this case, a tabular visualization 
using the event report application. Right, so that's it what we have for event, um, uh, uh, for the user role. So uh, I, yeah, so what we can do is we can do the final exercise for the user role, which is exercise three. So let us take a break of like uh, 10 minutes to do this final exercise. And then uh, after that, we can proceed to user groups.